Okay, okay. Hey guys! Hey! So, we're in the car headed to Arrington Vineyards. It's like an hour and a half to two hours from our house. Uh, so, we were supposed to leave at 9 o'clock. It's 11.22. So... We're now on our way. That didn't happen. We did have to stop by Best Buy and the gas station before we went, but that doesn't, there's no excuses. So. I got up a little late. It's my birthday. Oh well. So we're uh, on our way and we'll talk to you when we get there. So we made it to Arrington Vineyards. We're on a golf cart riding up the hill right now so that we can go in. Alright. Alright, so change of plans. So there's two locations you can taste wine at here. So we're going to what they call the barn because uh, there was no wait. Sorry. Hey Stacy. <laughs> As usual, talking on our phone. Um, so we'll let you know how the wine is. Uh -uh. Okay, so hey guys, um, we're gonna tell you about uh, Arrington Vineyards. So we just went through the wine tasting and we got a rose, it's called Scarlet. There you go, Scarlet, right there. It's pretty good. Um, we tried eight different wines and this is the one that we both chose. Yeah. So, where's the uh, the sheet that they gave us? So, this is what that wine is. It is a sweet rose wine with aromas of strawberry pie, bleeding into flavors of cherry, cranberry juice, and raspberry. Uh, doesn't sound appetizing on the sheet, but it's pretty good. Um, so, the atmosphere here, it's pretty chill, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's kind of like a relaxing place that you can just hang out. Um, so, our review of Arrington Vineyards is, come here, it's awesome. Um, the people are super friendly. Uh, they have great wine. Uh, the place is really pretty. And... You wanna um, check out the view behind us? Mm. Here you go. This is um, when you're sitting out like on the picnic area of the grass, you can come bring your own stuff. You can have blankets. So they kind of have all the grapes up there. So like I was saying, you can kind of come and have a picnic. You can bring your own stuff. You can sit on their picnic tables like we're doing right now. Um, or you can just kind of lay out in the grass like some of these other people are doing. It's pretty cool. Um, they also have food here, uh, just like, um, I think it's crackers and cheese, um, and, and so also... Story, we found out that Arrington Wines is actually co-owned by Kix Brooks, if you're a country music person, um, Brooks and Dunn. And if you buy his big bottle of wine, he'll sign it. So that's kind of cool. We haven't gotten that far yet. Mm. Um... Let's see, what else is there? 
Um, they also have music uh, from four to eight, um, so check their website. Um, I'm sure you can get on the Google and figure that one out. So, Great. well, yeah. we're gonna go catch a golf cart back down to the car. just because I'm not done pouring beer yet and I like yelling in y'all's faces. Um, I have been with the company for about three years now. Um, I actually started off as one of those girls checking your ID whenever you were picking up your, like, your tour tickets. That was me. Um, and then I got a bump up to here. Um, we're going to put water in there with those grains and we're going to bring them up to a boil. Now we're going to use, um, we're going to bring them up to a boil about 30 minutes or so. We're going to use about one quart of water to 10 pounds of grain. So we're talking about a lot of water and a lot of grain. Now what kind of water are we using? We are not using fancy Fiji bottles. We are actually using Metro Nashville water. And that's okay because we have a really good charcoal filtering system. Pulls out any impurities in that water and makes for a really good wort, which turns into great beer. Now, after about half an hour inside the match time, we're gonna transfer it over here into this bright vessel, and that's called the water time. And that's L-A-U-T-E-R, this is my journalism degree at work, um, smelling things. We're going to bring them up to a boil again. Um, we're going to stir them around. And this is where we're really going to separate those liquids from those solids. Because on the bottom, it's going to sell out all those spent grains. We got as many of those fermentable sugars as possible out. Now it's spent. It's of no use. And then that liquid on top is called the wort. Now this is the good kind of wort. Not the kind that grows on your foot. Um, this is what's going to turn into beer. But we're going to get rid of those spent grains. We're going to put them out into one of our big truck beds outside. Back in the day, it was Linus's truck bed. Now we actually have semi truck beds that come out picked up once a week, which is pretty cool. Um, and those are going to be delivered to local farmers. Um, they feed them to what we like to call the happiest cows and pigs in Nashville. Um, until you're at a restaurant and you're sitting there and you go, I'll have the Yazoo filet mignon as you're drinking your Dos Peros. You're like, wait a minute, this is the circle of life. Because they feed these grains to cows and pigs, and then they end up on these hashtag support local restaurants. Um, so think about that next time you're at a restaurant, you see Yazoo on the menu, totally in craft and in menu form. Anyway, once we have those grains out of our way to be reused and recycled, we're going to take that work, we're going to put it into our brew kettle. Now, in our brew kettle, we're going to bring it back up to a boil, about 150, 170 degrees, you know what we're making. Um, and this is where we're going to add the third ingredient to our beer. Now, this is where we're going to add the hops. Now, all beer has hops. So, so the nose of you, Linus um, started brewing this and um, he would just throw the spent grains out of back field because he didn't have farmers that wanted it, right? So one day they come home from work, Bridgestone, and um, they had two Labradors that had gotten the spent grains. There was still a little bit of sugar left in those over time, so it's going to ferment. And they had two drunk Labradors on their hands. And that is where the name Dos Peros came about. <laughs> now, that artwork, the two dogs, um, the Hefeweizen, the Pale Ale, the Daddy Oak, that is all artwork done by Lila, Linus' wife. She was one of those originals that was there helping out when we first opened. But she's also a great artist. They have two daughters now. So the Hawk Project um, was an ever-going series for the last like, 15 years. Um, it was our IPA series. Uh, brewers could come up with a recipe, brew in a small batch, and distribute it as a project. We finally settled on Project 86, also known as our Hawk Perfect <laughs> IPA. That is also known as our 10-year IPA recipe. Um, it's a really good light IPA with citron mosaic hops. Now bottled as the hot perfect. Now the artwork on this one um, is framed in the top from the original artwork, and that is done by their two daughters. So. All right. So uh, this is our last adventure for the day. We're going to go uh, explore Opry Mills Hotel, which is on the site of the former <laughs> Opryland. Opryland. So it's pretty cool. Um, they have they change it from like season to season, and it's just we've been here several times, but it's always fun to kind of walk around. Uh, they have a restaurant uh, inside and some rides, and uh, I think you can go on. Isn't there like a 
boat thing or yeah, something. Yeah, it goes through the middle. So, all right. We'll show you all the in inside. <laughs> 